Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dr. Jin Sung Show. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone and all the new viewers today. Uh, last week we talked about SIBO, or small intestinal bowel overgrowth, being the number one cause for IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome. Obviously these types of things cause constipation, diarrhea, abdominal cramping, uh, and a whole host of other symptoms. So last week was about you know, giving you the idea of what's going on with patients, what to look for, the definitions for SIBO, um, what the mechanisms are, and so forth. This week, what I'd like to do is actually give you a case study, an actual patient that I've taken care of over the last maybe four weeks who has SIBO, all right? So what I'd like to do is, um, without obviously giving you the name of the patient, or you know the age or whatever it is, I'd like to just kind of go over the history um, of the patient, and then give you um, you know what tests we did and what we found, and how do we take care of this patient? Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, the patient is a female uh, who was very very active, um, actually running marathons and so forth, and then and she developed issues with her GI tract. Um, a lot of bloating, you know, felt like she was pregnant, um, all the symptoms of SIBO. Uh, she um, uh, used to run uh, multiple marathons and uh, she could no longer do that because of the severe fatigue and abdominal issues. So the interesting thing about it is that she came in already diagnosed one time with SIBO and she really didn't know that. Um, they actually prescribed for her uh, rifaximin which is the antibiotic for uh, small intestinal bowel overgrowth. So she actually took that and it didn't make much of an effect for her. It was one of those things where um, you, know, you would think it would help, but it did not. And I think the primary reason was because she did not go through uh, the necessary dietary changes at the time. Uh, interestingly enough, she came in uh, in a relatively clean diet. She did not um, eat grains and, and she was trying to do much better and, and so forth um, how, and she was also actually doing intermittent fasting so she was taking time to kind of starve out the bacteria she kind of figured it out on her own that if she didn't eat she actually felt better uh, because she was not feeding the overgrowth of the bacteria okay so uh, if we look at the patient here uh, so we'll call her uh, Jane okay her main complaints were Fatigue, weight loss resistance despite eating small amounts and intermittent fasting, uh, brain fog, digestive issues, bloating, cramping, chronic constipation, and depression, right? Last week I talked to you about how the abdominal issues can create anxiety, depression, low mood um, due to serotonin production and some other things, right? So she had all that. Um, she also had um, uh, difficulty digesting fibers, uh, difficulty losing weight, uh, e easily agitated, easily upset, nervous, and memory issues. Uh, fatigue after meals, difficulty losing uh, uh, weak nails, uh, afternoon fatigue, etc. Okay, so she had a lot of different symptoms going on um, as a result. So if you look at it, she came in. It was uh, actually five years ago. She was very fit. Uh, running, uh, doing uh, triathlons, and so forth. And um, she developed a couple of infections. She also had Lyme, uh, which uh, required 21 days of doxycycline, which is a med medication. So it created some gut dysbiosis by taking these uh, infectious um, uh, remedies, right? Antibiotics for an infection plus Lyme's. Um, so she's had over like six weeks of antibiotics, which caused some problems for her. It was probably the, the starting point for developing SIBO, or small intestinal bowel overgrowth. Um, um, she had gut issues actually when she was also younger, but not as significant. And she kind of is a world traveler almost, you know, living in Australia, Sweden, here in the States, and so forth. Um, and she also has a thyroid problem, so that's another thing. Um, so what do we do? Uh, initially we ran some blood work. We were trying to figure out what's going on. And we did the blood test through her um, 
primary care physician who was willing to do some tests, and she had some tests. Uh, it was missing some things that I wanted to see, so I asked her to go back to her primary care physician to see if we could run some iron markers. Um, ferritin, which is your storage iron, uh, serum iron, total, total, total iron binding, binding capacity, and some other things. Because what I find with SIBO and a lot of the GI issues with infection, uh, it creates an iron deficiency anemia. So it creates issues in terms of absorption in the GI tract. Therefore, they feel tired and may not be just that you, know, you have a GI problem, it's that it's actually causing a deficiency in a nutrient like iron, okay? So iron deficiency uh, was checked and it turns out she was actually low. Uh, she had low, low endoferritin and uh, actually low serum iron. So um, it was causing problems in terms of recovery and fatigue. And this is a person who was very, very, very active and now she can't run because she's exhausted and she's not getting enough oxygen, right? So we saw her initially about four weeks, maybe five weeks ago. We did some tests and we found uh, on one of the specialized stool tests that we do in the office that she had an H. pylori infection, the Helicobacteria pylori, right? It's a GI infection, which is very common, um, but she had a, a, a big infection in the GI tract. Um, along with SIBO. So she has a double whammy. She has SIBO and she has um, uh, H. pylori infection and some gut dysbiosis obviously. But those are the two major things that I found in the stool test that we can say, hey, this is something that needs to be corrected in order for your health to recover and it will take some time. Um, SIBO ca cases tend to be usually pretty difficult. They're not the easiest cases. Uh, uh, on some, some cases though, we can turn them around pretty quickly. So this is a case where we took it uh, in four weeks, pretty much. Took the patient and we almost eliminated uh, her GI symptoms um, with the protocols that we did. And I'll go into the protocol in a second. Um, but what she was left with was chronic fatigue. Still very lethargic and tired. Um, and has difficulty doing the exercises and so forth because she did not have enough oxygen capacity. And we got those today, so we, we're gonna remedy that with some iron supplementation and so forth, right? So um, those were the major things that we found. And what did we do? So that's very important, right? Everybody wants to know, what do we do for SIBO? How do we help patients with uh, small intestinal bowel overgrowth? And everyone's a little different. And last week we did talk about different types of diets. We have the elemental diet, uh, a FODMAP diet, a modified SIBO diet, uh, element, um, a paleo diets, intermittent fasting. You can do a whole host of different things in terms of helping patients with these GI symptoms. In her case, what I did was um, we did a FODMAP diet, F-O-D, M-A-P, FOD, MAP. You can go look that up on the internet. It basically eliminates certain types of uh, starches and carbohydrates that create uh, increased bloating in the GI tract, okay? So what we're, what we're trying to do is kind of starve out the bacterial overgrowth, right? Because those bacteria that are in the small intestine kind of snuck up from the large intestine. So we want to be able to knock down the overgrowth of the uh, of the SIBO from the small intestine. So we started off with the diet, right? And then we added in a few products, and I'll list this later on um, under the video, but we, re we added in something called RepairVite SE. We added in a, uh, a specialized probiotic called Sabotica, okay? Another one called Enzymix Pro, and then enterobite, something called methyl SP, or we actually, for her, we use uh, super methyl SP. It had a methylated folate in there on top of it because has, she has some genetic predispos predisposition for it. Um, and then we all added in fish oil, vitamin D, and then we used an antimicrobial. The antimicrobial is called GI Synergy. It's a very broad spectrum antimicrobial. It's also antifungal, uh, anti-yeast type of thing. 
So we actually did a, a, a killing action. So the food and the diet did a elimination of the certain foods that cause problems. And then we're trying to kill the overgrowth. So in four weeks, again, do, on this protocol, she completely turned around her GI symptoms. It created um, um, uh, a sense of well-being for her, uh, although she does have some fatigue and those types of things. And then today she brought in some other labs that uh, confirmed what I was thinking about iron deficiency. And she does have it. So we're going to give her a, a specialized form. Um, it's called Ferricol. It's from Designs for Health. Um, and we're going to give her some iron supplementation. And hopefully we'll be able to turn around that, um, the fatigue that she has um, with some iron su supplementation. Because essentially the iron is needed for red blood cell production. She basically could not carry oxygen to the muscles and tissues and the brain. Therefore, she's getting brain fog, right? Fatigue and depression and all the other things. So the, the important thing here is just because you have a stomach problem, um, it does not mean that you will not have a problem somewhere else. So oftentimes when you go to a specialist and they go, oh, yes, you have a SIBO. And that's all they take care of, let's say. They give you an antibiotic. But the systemic effects of SIBO or, or gastrointestinal issues or GI parasites uh, it can be significant. You know, brain fog, depression. You know, who thinks about having uh, stomach problems and then causing brain problems? And it's one of those things where uh, it has to be taken care of really simultaneously uh, in order for them to get better. So this is a patient in progress. Obviously, four weeks in, doing much better in the GI symptoms. But the, the, the fatigue issue is still there, obviously. And it'll probably take a better another two months to finally get her to go and exercise the way she wants to. Um, for that person, it's really a quick turnaround, really, considering how long they've uh, suffered from this type of condition. So it's very important um, to manage these patients, complex patients, really. But she's been to other doctors. It's not, you know, she's been to some specialists in, in I believe, Germany and so forth and some doctors here in the United States before finding us here in, uh, in Massachusetts. So it's very, very important to get to the underlying cause. That is the number one thing we need to do in our office. Get to the underlying cause, fix those types of things first, and things will start to improve, and then fine tune over time, okay? I would like to thank everyone who uh, watched our videos last week. Uh, we did have a very good response and some instant messages uh, to me uh, asking some questions about uh, specific health conditions. Unfortunately, I can't answer like specific questions on Facebook, obviously, uh, about personal health, uh, although we can make some generalizations and give you information about things. So if you have any questions, post uh, your questions underneath, um, and I can make an educated um, research-based answer uh, rather than just say, for you, I need you to do this. I can't do that on Facebook, obviously, uh, for uh, you know, medical legal, legal reasons. But it is a fantastic way to, to get more information. Uh, and if you go back and watch some of our older videos, uh, there's quite a bit of information there. So my job is to deliver the quality of information for you, as much information as you I can possibly give you uh, without violating HIPAA laws and other things. But uh, I'd like to thank everybody. If you want to continue following this page, uh, like the page, like our uh, Facebook page there, uh, like the video, share it with other people. There, therefore, we can get the word out um, in terms of this are, uh, there are alternatives to what we're, uh, what's out there in terms of GI treatments. Uh, there are alternatives to things like Alzheimer's. There are alternatives to uh, thyroid conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. There are things you can do naturally to manage complex cases. Uh, not necessarily treat them, but you can go ahead and um, correct some of the underlying physiology will have a global effect on overall health. Okay? So we'll see you back next Tuesday at 1230. Thanks for joining us, and uh, really, I appreciate all the support. Thank you.